Hey, what's going on everyone? Nukem Finance here and we got some XPeng news and the stock is jumping because good news on delivery numbers. Now, if you don't know what XPeng is, it's another EV vehicle in the Chinese market competitor to NIO and Tesla and Li Auto. If you consider Li Auto really a really full electric car because they do have gas in it. So it's more like a hybrid. So let's go ahead and take a look at how the stock's doing and give you my full deep dive on this company on it. So let's take a look. So it looked like the stock is now $20 and it went up, up highest today, went up about uh, 11% now. It's trading around close to 10%. We'll see how it ends on the day. Uh, past weeks up 5%, past month, it's been relatively flat. Past three months, it's been down 13%. So, so far, um, if you bought it during IPO, you haven't been really making too much money on it. Yeah, because the IPO would around $23 and it's been down. And I gave you guys a warning, you know, IPOs, remember when Neo IPO'd, the stock was um, went up very high at first and it's just started tanking and take like a year and a half before it's at $20. Like you could got Neo for around like $2 a couple months ago, but not anymore. So let's take a look at what's causing this rise on XPeng. So XPeng deliveries jumped. Now the electric vehicle stock is soaring. So it says they, their third quarter's delivery is up 266% year over year and pushed the stock higher. So that's incredible. 266 growth year over year. Okay, let's see. Uh, now we also have a buy rating from Bin Wang, a Hong Kong based analyst at Credit Suzy uh, rates it at $21 a stock. You have JP Morgan analyst Nick Lay also rates X paying shares at a buy, and his is $27 per share. So, so far, it looks like good numbers and good deliveries. Looking at the actual numbers that got delivered, they delivered 3,478 cars in September and 8,000. 578 cars in third quarter. So that's what caused a 266 year over year. Still, it's not a lot compared to, I would say, Neo and Tesla. They still have a good delivery numbers, but this is pretty solid for a small company. And it's definitely making a name for itself in the space. Now, uh, let's go ahead and give you my full depth review analysis. If you guys really want to know the meat and the bones of this company, I made a video on it earlier. In case you guys didn't see it, I'll go ahead and show it now. Appreciate you guys' like and all updated on news. Feel free to chat to me on Discord so you guys stay updated and feel free to join the members below. Do you ever hear the word Chinese knockoff or Chinese ripoff? Uh, Xpeng is like a Tesla Chinese ripoff. Uh, and that being said, they hired someone from Tesla who helped write the autopilot source code. That guy admitted to uploading that source code autopilot to his personal email cloud account. And then he worked for XPeng, and now they have a very identical source code, if not the same source code, as Tesla's autopilot, and Tesla is suing that individual. So there's a lawsuit going on Tesla, which is a ripoff to Tesla. And the person who best put uh, in perspective what XPeng is, is Tesla Daily Rob Maurer. Now I'm gonna play his video because I think he lays the groundwork what XPeng is perfectly. So definitely I put a link in the description below. Check him out. I watch him for all my updates and my all my uh, Tesla news in the court in case I miss any of my own research to supplement it. So let's take a look what Rob Maurer says. EV maker XPeng Motors. As I said, they are preparing to file for an IPO on the US stock exchange under ticker XPEV. So I wanted to give a bit of an overview on their business and how they compare to Tesla. I think most people are probably familiar with XPeng due to Tesla's ongoing lawsuit against a former Tesla employee claiming that that employee shared Tesla's autopilot source code with XPeng. I can do more research on that if people are interested, but at least for today, I want to focus more on XPeng's business, which they have also modeled very closely after Tesla. A lot of similarities here from how they present themselves on their website. The page scrolling there is set up identically. Even things as little as Tesla's autopilot diagram, the color scheme down to the color of the vehicle is replicated in XPeng's diagram of their driving assist technology. They're even building out their own charging network, which they call superchargers. XPeng's user interfaces are similar. There's just a lot of emulation throughout their entire business. They're really not trying to hide it. Their founder said that, quote, one of the reasons XPeng was founded was because Elon Musk made Tesla's patents available. It was so exciting, end quote. And the founder seems to have a pretty extensive ownership history with Tesla vehicles. Anyway, in terms of the business, XPeng was founded in 2014. Over the years, they've raised about $1.7 billion 
from companies like Alibaba and Foxconn. And while we don't know the valuation, it seems to be at least in excess of $3.6 billion. I would imagine quite a bit higher than that at this point, but still to be determined for the IPO. Xpeng has two models currently that are actually in production, the G3, which is an all-electric SUV, and the P7, a sports sedan, which actually just started production this May. The G3 is a relatively compact SUV. It comes with two battery sizes, starts at 147,000 yuan after subsidies, which equates to about 21,100 US dollars, goes up to 200,000 yuan for the higher range version, or just under $29,000 US. The two battery pack options are 57.5 kilowatt hours or 66.7 kilowatt hours. Xpeng lists the range on the NEDC test cycle at 460 kilometers and 520 kilometers or 286 miles to 323 miles. However, as we talk about a lot, the NEDC test cycle generally leads to much higher range estimates than the EPA test cycle. The best conversion that I've found for that online has been 1.43 to 1, which if that were to apply accurately to the G3, would lead to a range of 200 miles to 226 miles on the EPA test cycle. That doesn't mean that's what it would come out to be, that's just an estimate. There can be a lot of variance in how those convert over, which will come into play here when we talk about the P7. So the P7 is the newer one. As I said, it started production in May, and this would compare most closely to the Model 3, with a starting price of 230,000 yuan to 350,000 yuan, or 33,000 US dollars to 50,000 US dollars after subsidies, compared to the Model 3, which after subsidies in China starts at what would be equivalent to roughly 39,000 US dollars up to 60,000. So it does actually come in a bit lower in price than the Model 3 does, even though that base model does actually have a higher energy capacity with 70.8 kilowatt hours, and then the higher energy capacity offering has 80.9 kilowatt hours. Depending on the motor setup you opt for, that'll give you anywhere from 562 kilometers to 586 kilometers, or 349 miles to 364 miles on the NEDC test cycle for the smaller battery. And then for the 81 kilowatt hour pack, they list the range at 670 kilometers to 706 kilometers, or 416 miles to 439 miles. If we again use the 1.43 to 1 conversion for the smaller pack, that would lead to an EPA estimate of 244 to 255 miles, and then for the larger pack, 291 to 307 miles. Of course, neither of these are offered for sale in the US right now, but I think relatively decent range specs even under those conversion assumptions, certainly better for the money than what we would see from something like BMW or Mercedes, and strictly looking at the range and efficiency at that price point, excluding everything else that goes into owning a vehicle, which is obviously important, those numbers do look relatively competitive with the Model 3. The problem here is the NEDC test cycle. So if we compare what Tesla states the range for the Model 3 at versus what Xpeng has, the Model 3 is listed at 445 kilometers to 668 kilometers. Now, if we convert that back to miles and to EPA, which we actually know from Tesla's US website, of course, instead of converting back at 1.43 to 1, Tesla actually converts back at about 1.1 to 1. Stating that another way, that means that displayed on the website in China, the range for the Model 3 is only about 10% more than what's shown in the United States, when in general, going from EPA to NEDC, you would expect about a 40% increase in the displayed number. So I'm not sure if Tesla would be displaying a more conservative number for some reason. I remember when the Model 3 first came out in the US, they actually understated the range to what the EPA test result was. So that wouldn't be unprecedented. Or maybe the efficiency decisions and optimizations that Tesla has made for the Model 3 don't mix as well with the NEDC test as other vehicles might. But as it stands based on the NEDC test cycle numbers that are listed on Tesla's website versus Xpeng's website, the Xpeng P7 would actually be a bit more efficient than the Model 3 and also carry a bit more range. So I think you can understand why I'm a bit skeptical of that. We do have a little bit of third-party data, though it is very limited at this point in time, from Bjorn Nyland, aka Tesla Bjorn, on YouTube, who does a lot of this sort of electric vehicle testing, so I'll put a link to that video in the show notes. But in his medium speed and high speed testing, he did actually find the Xpeng P7 to be a bit more efficient than the Performance Model 3. So I do think that's pretty interesting and definitely an area that I'll be keeping an eye on for more information. As for production, it does seem to be ramping up relatively quickly. As I said, that began in May. For the quarter ended June 30th, they had delivered 325 P7s. For the month of July, that actually picked up quite a bit and they delivered over 1600 P7s for that month. That seems like a relatively strong ramp up for just the second or third month of production. About how they produce vehicles overall, Xpeng says, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher some of these location names, but quote, 
We produced the G3 through a contract manufacturing collaboration with HEMA, which has over three decades of automotive manufacturing experience at its plant in Zhangzhou, Henan province. The arrangement allows us to retain effective control of key manufacturing and procurement processes and product quality with minimal required capital outlay. In addition, we have built our own plant in Zaqing, Guangdan province. We started the production of the P7 at the plant in May 2020, and will also utilize the plant for future models. We are leveraging the manufacturing know-how and experience gained at the HEMA plant to quickly ramp up the Zaqing plant. The HEMA plant and the Zaqing plant have annual production capacity of up to 150,000 units and 100,000 units, respectively." End quote. So beginning with partnership, but now looks like they are more focused on shifting to doing their own manufacturing. We sort of see that mix present throughout their business. They have 147 locations. 100 of those are stores. Of those 140 are directly owned and 60 are franchised. Then the remaining 47 are service centers. Four of those are directly owned and 43 of those franchised. Then as I said, they are building out a charging network similarly to how Tesla has built one out and again calling it supercharger stations. They say that as of end of June, there were 114 of these stations with an average of seven charging slots per station. And they say that 61 of those are operated directly by Xpeng and 53 are operated by franchisees. So again, sort of that presence of partnerships throughout. As for batteries, CATL seems to be their main supplier. And at least on the P7, they actually use a prismatic form factor versus Tesla, which would be cylindrical and then they're using a nickel cobalt manganese chemistry. Xpeng currently has about 3,700 employees. In the first half of 2020, they've done about $142 million in revenue with a negative 3.5% gross margin. Obviously that's not good, but it is quite a bit better than last year when they carried a negative 38% gross margin through the first six months of the year. Overall though, the net loss in the first half for Xpeng was about $113 million. A couple other interesting tidbits here from the F1 filing. They did talk about market size and find the mid to high end segment as a price range from 150,000 yuan to 300,000 yuan. They said that's expected to grow from 6.5 million units in 2019 to 10.8 million units in 2025. And that's just for China, and that price range in US dollars is about 21,000 or so to about 43,000. The last thing I thought was interesting was the filing talking a lot about the potential for subscription services. They talked about how that could be deployed for their autonomous capabilities, things like that. But specifically something I thought was interesting was the other premium features that they talked about. And they gave an example here saying, quote, for example, we have identified strong customer demand for in-car music as our customers listen to approximately two hours of online music per day on the wheel in 2019, end quote. I thought that was a pretty surprising and interesting number. I would have guessed lower. And I'm not sure if that refers to just total audio being played, if they're counting all of that, or if this is specifically from a streaming music service that they offer. I also guess it probably depends on how many of these vehicles are being put into operation with a fleet versus to a personal user. Anyway, definitely some interesting stuff there. I'm sure there's probably going to be some animosity from Tesla followers because of that pending lawsuit. And I'm sure we'll just get a lot of comments about this being the China knockoff of Tesla, which yeah, pretty much seems to be the case. But Tesla's got a pretty good strategy. That's really the argument that we make all the time is that other automakers should try to copy that strategy. I don't really agree with how closely Xpeng is doing that in a lot of cases. But I do think there are some interesting things to keep an eye on here, and I'm hoping we can discuss those things. So as you can see, this is why I love watching Tesla Daily. Rob really knows how to have an open mind and look in depth of many different companies and how it compares to Tesla. And he talks to bears as well to understand why they're so bearish on Tesla. So definitely check them out. A link in the description below. So let's talk about Xpeng. Well, first off, they're backed by Alibaba which is the richest guy in the world, Jack Ma, who owns Alibaba. And they did an interview with him and Elon Musk uh, about technology. And you can just see Jack Ma is, he's not really there. AI, I, I hate the word AI called artificial intelligence. I call it Alibaba intelligence. Yeah. 9.99% <laughs> of the predictions that human being had in the history about the future, all wrong. Including that one? Oh yeah. <laughs> Only thing about that, I, I, I actually I'm not interested in Mars. I just came back from there, so uh -huh. I'm more interested on the Earth, the things, what's going on happening here. So what, what, why you are so curious about the Mars? Just a one step, you go to Mars, but you will never be able to come back. Yeah, so that, that's that, my that's view. That's not how it works, though. And uh, <laughs> also, but I, so that's my view about jobs. Don't worry about it. We will have jobs. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know this is mainly a Neo video, but it, it shows you if you're interested in investing in x pain which, you know, Jack Ma is backing since he owns Alibaba and Alibaba is backing it. But uh, in the earnings call quarter two, 2020, Elon Musk talks about uh, how technology could be very advanced, more advanced than human. And this is what Jack Ma had to say back in the conference. I never in my life, and especially last two years when people talk about AI, say uh, human, human being will be controlled by machines. I never think about that. I think it's, 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 it's impossible, <laughs> right? It's impossible because human beings, they are different. Machines are invented by human beings. And according to the science, right, humans can never create another animal that is smarter than humans. Especially when you have so many smart people, it's impossible to make another smart people. I, I very much disagree with that. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Um, to be concerned about where AI is going. The people I see being the most wrong about AI are the ones who are very smart because they can't imagine that a computer could be way smarter than them. That, that's the flaw in their logic. They're just way dumber than they think they are. <laughs> so that's another reason I'm not interested in x -Pain because Jack Maul is backing up the CEO and seems like Jack Maul doesn't really know the tech industry that well. And I would say Tesla is a tech company, so how can you be really competitive to Tesla? I think Neo is a better option. They they have more sales, they have more proof, they have more government backing than I would say x -Pain does. And the thing is, x -Pain, they, you know, inflate their numbers with their testing of their mile range, where Tesla deflates it. I don't know why Tesla always understate on what their cars can do. I don't know if it's a safety reason, but Tesla always understates uh, their car or where their tech is, and then they surprise everyone once they actually reveal it. So it's crazy. Overall, I think Neo is a better play. Um, so let me know what you guys think. Are you guys going to invest in x or are you guys going to stay away? It's possible I'm missing out on huge, but I don't think they're innovative, innovative enough for me uh, where they have a sense of clear direction where to go. Where you can see Tesla, um, Elon Musk knows where he's going. This other guy is just copying what uh, Elon Musk is doing. That's not real innovation. You're just really essentially investing in a Chinese uh, knockoff of the actual product. Why would you want to invest in a knockoff? But that's my opinion. I love your beautiful faces. Oh yeah, I just got a Patreon if you guys want to see all the trades. Uh, and have me take a look at your portfolio, take a look at that as well. And don't forget, enter the PC giveaway.